stuff, you know. Yeah. What's it mean to you uh, when you have a song like Africa that not, goes crazy on like a TikTok campaign? You know, see these kids, it's, it's just... It's the gift that keeps on getting... Nobody's more surprised than we were. Yeah. Because that's the goofiest song we've ever recorded. <laughs> it was basically an exercise to see how, how can we use the recording studio to its fullest. We started doing it with loops, and Al Schmidt was there, and he knew how to do it old school. We did it with the tape around the mic stands and holding with a pencil and stuff. Wow. And we'd make the loop, and then we'd cut that together and start overdubbing to that, and then it just turned into this whole thing. Uh, you know. And, and we cut the whole record without knowing what the lyrics were. Really? At the very end. <laughs> Wow. Dave you know would just that? hum along. It's great melody, man. We know the lyrics. I don't know. I'm write about... You know, I don't know, Africa or something. Like Africa. They were from North Hollywood, man. We didn't write about Africa. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did Jeff come up with the drum riffs? No, Jeff was a, very much of the muse for the whole thing. He was the one that said, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do it with a loop. And he kind of, he took over the leadership role in that particular movie, especially when we first started cutting it, yeah. all the way up to the point where, and then he helped Dave with the lyrics. Oh, So, okay. you know, the lyrics were silly. I mean, come on, let's face it. I mean, you know. So we never really thought much of it, and then it became a. It was like a number one record back in 1983. Yeah. So we didn't think much of it, and then it's just one of those freaks of nature things. It just came back like a scathing case of herpes from the past. <laughs> you know what I mean? You thought it was gone, but no, it came back. You you scratched it a little too hard, and it festered. There's and do you know you know what TikTok is right? Oh sure. And we're going crazy on there, and there's like a Toto challenge hashtag Toto. Oh, challenge, there was people that would play the same, play just that song all night long in a club. I would kill myself <laughs> the third time. <laughs> you know, I would get like you know. Yeah. We had no idea what that was going to be. It started out as a gag, and it, and it just snowballed into this massive thing, you know. Huge. Uh, J I'm walking out. Great for the, the, it's been great the, for business, though. Oh, yeah. I'm walking out of the gate, and Jeff's walking in, and he stops me. And I, I could tell he was really excited, and he goes, Paul, I got something to tell you. And I go, what's that? And he goes, we're going to number one next week on Billboard yeah. with Toto 4. And I was like. Oh my God! Yeah. Really? Those are great times. Yeah, I mean, was that a highlight of? I mean, having that record just yeah, everywhere at the we're time. In the audience, the Grammy Awards going was just set up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, and then they call your name. They were just going. This is just. I still. It's still that. This is so surreal. I don't have much memory of it. Yeah. It was more like you know I was on some acid trip that I. Whirlwind. It was a shame. It was great because my parents were in the audience. They got to see that their investment paid off. Oh. The kid did something with himself about that. Did you go to North Hollywood High? Grant High School. And you went to North Hollywood. Gotcha. I was supposed to go to North Hollywood, but I went to Grant. That would that's where I met you know, that changed my whole life going to Grant. You met the guys there. Yeah. So. I, met, I met the Picaro brothers there. Yeah. And me and Landau went there and a bunch of people and John Pierce, bass player, uh, who's now playing with us again. I stole him back. He's my first friend in the whole world. Our, our moms were pregnant in the same block. That's how long we know each other. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, I met in Lando when I was 12, when we were both 12. And, uh, you know, most of us have, and the Picard brothers in, in high school, I met Steve first, and then we were in his, his band, Still Life, and then that sort of morphed into Boz's band, which morphed into Toto. Did you go on the road with Boz or just Jeff? Oh, no, you both did. Steve did too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was 1977. We the, the summer of 77. By the fall of 77, we were working on the first album. We had cut demos, four demos in January, early February 77. Yeah. And then we all were doing sessions. And then I got the call to do Boz, which was exciting. It was great because, you know, Silk Degrees was still riding high. Yeah. I, got to, I did an overdub here. Uh, on a solo I did on the the follow up album to that Down to Then Left, which is the first gold record I ever got in my life. If I remember correctly, I think David produced a Boz record here. Produced, I mean, yeah, he you know he or did arrangements. Something. Well, no, I mean, you know, by for all intent and purposes, he produced the record. I mean, yeah, you know, him and Jeff, you know, were the you know, Dave wrote all the stuff and with Boz and. Jeff is Jeff, you know how he'd light up a room no matter when he was. Oh, uh, he yeah. was like just made everything sound better just by being there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <clears throat> he had a special aura, man. But you can't learn, right? A few more questions. Um, Twelve inches, and yeah. I'm heterosexual. But you're getting a reduction, you told me. <laughs> yeah. 
What? You're getting a reduction, you told me. I got the reduction. Oh, nice. To be oh, my gosh. <laughs> Incredible. And he didn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Whenever I want to remind myself, though, I just go slam it in the door a couple times <laughs> and it puffs up rather nicely. <laughs> it's kind of like a puffer fish, you know? Um, You're going to keep this, are you?